Destination Deduction Caroline has a car she doesn't drive anymore. She could sell it, or her favorite charity says they gladly accept any vehicle, boat, motorcycle, airplane, or RV donation as a fundraiser to help achieve their mission. Caroline loves the idea of helping her favorite pet project and likes the idea of a tax deduction for something she doesn't need anymore. She hands over the keys, and everyone is happy. Or are they? There are a number of factors a donor needs to look at before simply handing over the keys to any vehicle or toy and writing down a number on their tax return. The path to this type of deduction is like a mountain road, full of twists and turns. One wrong turn, and you end up with a smaller deduction and a bigger tax bill. Follow Caroline's journey to see how she can reach her donation destination, or if she ends up in a deduction dead end. Scenario 1. Caroline's car is worth $8,000. This is the fair market value, which is the price a willing buyer would pay and the price a willing seller would accept with both parties having reasonable knowledge of the relevant facts. Because the fair market value is more than $5,000, Caroline had to have it appraised by a qualified appraiser. The appraisal has to be made within 60 days of contributing the car. She donates the car to a qualified charity and takes an $8,000 itemized charitable deduction assuming her total contributions do not exceed 50% of her gross adjusted income for the year of the deduction. The charity intends to keep the car for its use and uses it for its intended purpose, transportation. Success! Caroline gets to claim the full amount of the donation and the charity is able to further its mission with her help. Scenario 2. Caroline donates her $8,000 car. She takes the deduction at that value that year. The charity sells the car for $2,000 in an arm's length transaction without significant intervening use. Caroline gets a letter from the charity notifying her of the sale, and suddenly her $8,000 deduction becomes $2,000. Wrong turn. Caroline might now have to amend her return, she can only deduct the value of the sale, and will likely owe more tax since the amount of her deduction has changed. Scenario 3. The $8,000 car is donated by Caroline, who takes the same dollar amount in a deduction. The charity does extensive work to the vehicle, vastly improving its value. Caroline donated a non-functional car, so the charity had a new motor installed before selling it. Success! Caroline still gets the $8,000 write-off because the vehicle was improved, even if the charity was only able to get, say, $6,000 for it upon sale. Like any savvy motorist, Caroline should have done some trip planning before setting out on her journey. She should have talked with the nonprofit to see what its plans were for her donation, if she found out they planned to sell it immediately, she might have been better off to sell the car herself and then make the cash donation to the charity. They have the potential to make more cash that way, don't have to worry about the logistics of selling the car, and Caroline can claim the full amount of the donation, whatever she was able to sell the car for. It's also always advisable to talk to your CPA about the timing of donating any kind of vehicle or toy, as well as consult on any other limitations the tax law places on donations and deductions. One more important thing to remember if you find yourself following Caroline's route, a charity in receipt of your donation has many obligations to you. They must report the donation on Form 1098-C to both the IRS and you, the donor. They must complete all the required acknowledgments before your deduction is good. If the charity you support fails or forgets the important reporting they have to do, you may be stranded. So be sure your charity knows what to do and does it. Questions? 
Give us a call. We're here to help.